Welcome back to Dukascopy TV. Joining me to discuss the impact the economic downturn is having on private wealth is Anthony Mitteljane from Global Eye. Thanks for joining me, Anthony. So, if you can tell me what measures, if any, are investors taking to protect their private wealth in this current economic downturn? Sure. This is actually a very common question with a lot of our investors in terms of, you know, what. What, what is a good opportunity to invest in or is this the right time to invest in? I suppose with um, you know, the future of, of Europe uh, and the uncertainty looming over us um, and other economic data that's coming out, um, it's, it's understandable why investors are leaning towards being cautious in terms of the investment. However, that does not quantify either than to be sitting on a fence and simply leaving your money in a bank account. Uh, the reality there, uh, Navjeet, is that with interest rates currently as close to zero, uh, one's wealth is actually eroding through inflation, which currently here in Switzerland is about two to two and a half percent. What we rec what we advi advise in our clients is to consider. Uh, investing their portfolio into a, a diverse a diversification of asset classes and not having overexposure in one particular asset class. Um, and this is what we here at Global Eye specialise in, in achieving that right, correct balance, um, meeting the cl uh, client's expectations. So what advice, if any, would you be giving to investors who are concerned about investing in today's market? Sure. Um, there are always constant opportunities for an investor, uh, be that the market is buoyant or uh, on a downturn. Um, even though the past performance of the stock market cannot uh, predict what the future lies, a lot of investors tend to use historical data and statistics when making their investment decisions. I'd like to turn your attention to the graph that we have here. This demonstrates the, uh, the markets in the various asset classes over the last 25 years. If we start with the orange line, that demonstrates uh, someone that invested back in 1985 with 10,000. In a course of 25 years when we've had exceptionally high interest, um, that person would have uh, within 25 years more or less doubled their, their wealth simply by leaving in a bank account. Unfortunately, reality now, as I mentioned earlier, with interest rates um, close to zero, um, that is not likely to be the case. Moving on to the green line, the green line then demonstrates uh, an investor that puts their money into something like a fixed interest fund. Um, as, as you can see, the, the line is relatively smooth, uh, but here again, we, we're achieving much better growth. Um, again, someone that invested 10,000 back in 1985 would have achieved nearly six times their initial investment in a course of 25 years. And then finally moving on to the blue line, which are the events that we've, uh, we've faced in terms of the stock market. Um, and as you can see, there's a lot more volatility in the, ter in the sense that we, you know, the markets have gone up and gone down. And in, in the sense, there's, been, there's a lot of uh, uncertainty with, with, with the equity market. However, again, if we just look at someone that put their money unmanaged back in 1985, in 2012, they would have nearly uh, multiplied their wealth by 10 times. And this again is where we sort of specialise in, is having that diversification to have the right balance between each asset class. So we have the growth, but we manage it in a sensible way so that we can grow your wealth uh, it sort of more consistently without having the sort of fluctuations that you would have in an equity market. Moving on to the other fact sheet that I have here, Navjeet. Um, this, just, this, is, this is just statistics looking at uh, how the market has reacted when we've had a bear market and the bull market. On the left hand side uh, is the bear market since 1969 um, and the first section just shows the, the length of the bear market that we've had and the market decline. What's more interesting is a summarization of, of that period. If we look at some of the f statistics there, so since 1969, we've had seven bear markets. The average frequency of these bear markets tends to be one in every 5.5 years. Um, the last one that, w that we are currently actually uh, within uh, started back in February 2009, effectively just after the credit crunch hit in. The average duration 
is 15 months. But the most interesting stat statistics is during the bull markets, the market decline on average by 31.3%. If we then move over to the right hand side, again, this looks at the bull market since 1969. And again, the different periods where we've had those bull markets. If again, we then move to the summarization from averaging the, the, the bull markets, we've actually increased by 171% when we've been through a bull market. So if we take into account, if we accumulate both the bull market and the bear market, we can see that the average stock market grows uh, far more uh, rapidly than its decline. So what are the do's and don'ts for investing in your view? Sure. In my opinion, Navjeet, uh, a savvy investor is, investor is one that reacts to the market conditions, be that going the market goes up or goes down. Um, what's most important is for any investor is that they have a proactive uh, monitoring of their portfolio. Two most common uh, pitfalls that we tend to find with investors is one largely coming back to what I've just said, that uh, um, investment is not monitored. So an opportunity uh, may be missed, either that if you have a current investment to get out of it or if to enter into market if the market is not being monitored. Another pitfall is, uh, is one where an investor uh, dictates their investment decision based upon emotions or panic. Um, if I can then refer back to graph, that the, graph, the first graph, um, a lot of investors in the past have uh, reacted badly when there has been downturn. So if, we, if I can just take a certain section of this graph, if we look at 2008 after the credit crunch, when, the, when there was panic selling in the market, a, a lot of people panicked and sold a lot of their portfolio. The problem with that then is that they sold it more towards the low of, of, of the graph rather than when the market was at, at its peak. Um, and then on the, vice versa, people tend to buy when you have that feel good factor. Again, the problem with that is the market has already factored in that growth. So again, they would then tend to buy in when the market is already on the up, um, again, to more than likely towards the peak of, of, of the cycle. Um, and th these are the two key issues that uh, we tend to sort of uh, highlight and monitor and address. And this is why, you know, it's so important to have that proactive approach with your wealth. Well, thanks for joining me today, Anthony, and thanks for those great insights. That's all we've got time for right now, but stay tuned to Dukascopy TV for more updates and interviews. For now, though, goodbye.